Hello and welcome to SSW TV. My name is Daniel Malik and I'm a solution architect. Today with me is Damien Brady and he's a solution architect from Brisbane office. So Damien, welcome. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about Octopus Deploy. So yep. tell me what Octopus Deploy actually is. So uh, Octopus is a friendly deployment, uh, automated deployment system for .NET developers. So if you're a .NET developer who's writing any kind of .NET code from websites to Windows Forms to services, uh, you can use Octopus Deploy to give you a repeatable way of deploying those applications as well as to servers but um, also to Windows Azure as well, or Microsoft mm. Azure. And what are the main benefits of so what we deploy. yeah what what we find when we go out to clients a lot of the time is they have a really um, a really hard deployment process that is basically um, conducted using a word document with a whole lot of steps. Um, it's really error prone. So um, yeah. if somebody skips a step or maybe they'll copy the web config file over the one in production, which has happened countless times, I'm sure. Um, it can cause a lot of problems, and basically it's 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 definitely not a foolproof thing. So what Octopus does um, is it allows you to automate that process and it does it in, in some really clever ways um, that mean that you get the same deployment process across all of your environments regardless of what those environments look like. Can you show me how this works? I can. So um, the Octopus Deploy website gives a really uh, great demo actually. So if you click on Learn and go to Live Demo, um, it will take you to a dashboard. Now the great thing about this demo actually is that the dashboard is quite realistic. It, um, it really represents some of the projects that, um, or something along the lines of the projects that you might actually be doing in real life. So we can see on their, on their dashboard, um, the demo one, we've got four applications um, and they've grouped them into two groups. There's one for the cloud and then there's an Octo FX. Um, so that makes them three. I guess four. There's three four applications. Sorry, okay, yeah. four, in my, four environments. Yeah, so there's four environments, yes. So there's three applications deployed across development, test, acceptance, and production environments. Um, so the way Octopus works and the way you configure it is you set up your projects, and they roughly represent applications. Um, so that might be a collection of a couple of, um, a couple of projects, but essentially a project is an application. And then you have your series of environments, and in those environments you can configure machines. So we can see in their demo, um, they've got a development environment here, mm -hmm. which has one server, test environment with one server, and then we've got acceptance and production environments with multiple servers. Um, the other thing which is great about these environments is you assign roles to them. So we can see here in our development environment, we've got an app server and a web server role. Um, so this machine is acting as both of these roles at the same time for development. Same with your test server. Okay. When you head to uh, acceptance testing, these roles start to split out into different machines. So we have two app servers and we have a web server. So, so basically this means that when I hit a different environment, yep. application will be deployed for, example, in acceptance, it will be deployed to two servers. That's, That's correct. correct. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the, the key with Octopus Deploy is when you set up your process for deployment, you set it up in a way that talks about um, talks about roles and talks about um, environments rather than talking about a particular server. And what that means is that your process becomes really repeatable. Mm -hmm. um, so if we have a look, we'll have a look a little bit more at um, one of these projects. So let's have a look at the OctoFX trading website. Okay. Um, so we get an overview. We can see which versions of the application have been deployed to which environments. So we can see we've got a few, so we've got a matching version in development and test. Uh, we've got a a more recent, sorry, a, uh, an older version, sorry, in acceptance, and we've got an older version still in production. Um, now you can get these uh, these deployments to trigger automatically um, uh, from various things, so from MS Build or from um, Team City. Um, there's plugins as well, um, or you can manually promote these releases. So what happens, for example, if I uh, in test environment decide that this version is not good, can I reject it? Um, you can, so the best thing to do really is just not to not promote it. Ah, so okay. when, it, when it deploys, and we have some, uh, some really great um, deployments uh, for some of our clients as well using Octopus Deploy, um, these processes will really just deploy the application, it doesn't do anything else. We have some processes, um, so some deployment processes with some of our clients that will do things like run Selenium tests. and. Um, change configuration to run some more integration tests and then deploy to a different server if that 
succeeds as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in these processes that make it really powerful. And if any of those steps fail, you can fail that release and rather than this green success that you can see, you'll see a red failure and you can get oh, information okay. about how that works. Uh, how about if I want to be notified? So for example, um, I proceed from one, one environment to the next one, can I get an email? So You can, yeah. So in the configuration, um, you can set up uh, email um, accounts for notifications and things like that. There's also, if you want to go a little bit further, the documentation gives information about an API. So um, you can oh. integrate Octopus into various things. So um, the standard way of doing it is Team City, um, Visual Studio, Atlassian, Bamboo, and Jenkins. So there's mm -hmm. a few of those options. Um, it will run scripts and deploy as well. Um, but there's also REST APIs. Um, there's uh, CI servers. There's a lot, of, a lot of different ways that you can integrate this into your existing process as well. Um, there are steps as well that you can put into your process. So if we have a look at the process for this trading website, we can see there's really three tasks. Um, for each web server, we'll remove it from the balancer, but only in production. It only, that's only appropriate in production. We don't have load balancers in our other environments. Um, we deploy the website, and then we add that um, site back into the balancer. We could add another step here to um, run a PowerShell script, for example, and that PowerShell script can do all sorts of things. So that might send an email to a particular location or call a TFS um, REST API um, to notify a team room that something, is, something has gone wrong. So there's a lot of integration you can do just as part of your deployment process. So basically, all steps in the process are PowerShell scripts or yeah, so the, the way it works under the covers is um, there are PowerShell scripts that run pretty much everything you do. So um, you can deploy NuGet packages and it knows how to do that. It basically unpacks the package and puts it in a location. Run PowerShell scripts, emails. You can even have manual intervention, which kind of defeats the purpose a little bit of having an automated um, system. But um, other deployments and things like that, those are basically PowerShell scripts that they've given to you. You can write your own PowerShell script, obviously. But one of the more recent um, changes has been this library. So you can actually establish a library of um, tasks that are repeatable. So um, if you go to library.octopus.deploy.com, you can see templates that other people have created. Oh, so that's hilarious. Yeah. So, so basically, <laughs> I can just use those packages in my yeah, you can. So um, one in my process, one that we've been using actually um, for one of our clients is this HipChat notification. So the team uses HipChat as their chat, their team room basically. Um, so when a deployment succeeds or fails, we notify that room and we get a message in that room. So there's there's a lot of stuff you can do here. That's amazing. That's really cool. So the um so the one bit that we've we've left out at the moment is how to actually trigger these builds. Yep, that's the most important part. That's the most important part, yeah. So um, under the covers, Octopus works um, with NuGet. And the advantage of using NuGet under the covers is that you have that framework of versions of an assembly or versions of a resource and its dependencies and all sorts of stuff like that. So the guys at Octopus have made this really easy. So basically to get one of your um, projects in a state where Octopus Deploy knows what to do with it, you install a NuGet package into your project called Octopack, and that will be enough basically to let your build process know that it needs to create a NuGet package. It contains all that logic. Okay. So in TFS itself, if you're using TFS, which we always recommend, um, you can add an argument to your MS build um, arguments in your build process called uh, slash p octo, uh, sorry, what is it? Run Octopack equals true, and that will create a NuGet package as part of that build. Uh -huh. yeah. So if I have a build definition mm -hmm. set up and if I'm using continuous integration, mm -hmm. I expect that TFS will run Octopus Deploy in the back. It will. So um, there are a lot of other arguments you can, you can add to this as well. So one of the most important things, obviously, is to be able to publish to a NuGet feed so that Octopus knows where to find the new versions. Um, there are other arguments. If you have a look in um, the... Um, there's a link here for learn more in the section on Octopack. So Octopack has a few more arguments you can add. Um, and if you scroll all the way down, you can see you can publish the package to a file share, which you can also use as a NuGet feed, um, or to a NuGet server itself. 
Octopus actually provides a NuGet server inside as well, so you can publish a NuGet package directly to Octopus as part of your build. If you're not using TFS, there's also plugins for um, various things like... Um, for Team City, that would Team be my City. guess, yeah. yeah. So Team City, the integration's really nice as well. Okay. Um, that's the other one that we've used. So if we return back to the, the concept itself, mm -hmm. do I have to manually upgrade for, to the next environment, or can I do that automatically? You can trigger the next build, I believe, as a process. So basically, I can integrate it with a, a different build definition? Uh, so a different build definition, sorry, in TFS? In TFS, for example, yeah. Um, your, well, you can actually trigger, if you have other steps in your build process, you can trigger another, um, another build definition. But if you wanted to do that in Octopus, you could have another um, script or another step in your process that would say, if all this succeeds, then deploy to, um, sorry, then promote this to your staging environment, for ah, example. Okay. So you could get continuous order, uh, continuous integration all the way through these environments if you really So just to. with a single build? With a single, yeah, with a single um, process, yes. Cool. Okay. So yeah, we're, um, we're using Octopus uh, for a number of our, um, our clients at the moment, and we found it really, really powerful um, for deploying not just to Windows or to Microsoft Azure, but also to various servers. We have builds that will run Selenium tests, run integration tests, uh, report on failures, uh, even ones that will roll back automatically if previous steps fail, and things like that. So there's, you're really limited um, only by your PowerShell abilities, and if you don't know PowerShell well enough, then Google and Bing certainly know PowerShell quite well. Um, so I always ask them. Um, so it's, it's more or less a limitless um, system for deploying. You can automate anything you want. So this Octopus deploy is quite a useful thing. I have to say I'm very impressed with what I have seen so far and I'll give it a try. So thank you Damien for introduction to Octopus deploy. No problem, thanks for having me. Yeah, so my name is Daniel Malik. Thanks for watching SSW TV. Cheers. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.